Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com, back today to talk about more failed Volkswagen parts. Today we're going to be talking about keys, well, not Nissan keys, Volkswagen keys, and remotes. This is actually the 17th failed parts video that I've done, so if you ever wondered how Volkswagen part fails, check it out on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. I also always put links to the playlist in the show notes for you guys, so you can just scroll down and click how VW parts fail and check out all the failed parts videos that I've done. All right, before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. I always say DeutschAutoParts.com, but they actually got a brand new website called ShopDAP.com, so check them out at ShopDAP.com now. It'll probably take me a while to get used to that. But anyway, these guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts, ton of DIY videos. They have great service, great pricing, a lot of factory stuff, a lot of aftermarket stuff, so check them out at ShopDAP. Com. And again, there'll be a link in the show notes for you guys. All right, so it seems pretty basic, but I have this checklist of things that I talk about in every fail parts video. And the first one is, what is this part? Well, duh, it's a key. It's what we put in the ignition. I actually have an ignition cylinder here to start our car. This is, of course, not the one for my car, which these are my keys, um, so it won't turn. But everybody pretty much basically gets the idea of what a car key is. We uh, put it in the door to lock and unlock our car, or we use the remote like I do to lock and unlock the car. On the newer stuff, you can have potentially remote start, like on the Passats, or you can have the Kessie system, which is the keyless touch entry, where all you do is you grab the door handle and open the door, or you touch the little spot on the door handle to lock the door. Or if you're really good, you hold the door handle in a certain way and it lowers or raises the windows. But it's more than just a mechanical part. There's also a little pill inside of the key portion that functions with the immobilizer system of the vehicle. The immobilizer system of the vehicle is what prevents you from basically hot wiring the car and stealing it. And again, it provides signal for lock, unlock. So it is one of the theft deterrent systems that is built into your Volkswagen and pretty much every other car. I held up my Nissan key and it's got that same chip inside of it as well. So how does it work? Well, signals are transmitted to and from the key in order to make these functions happen. So when I take my keys and I press the lock button, it sends a signal to the car, hey, lock the doors, or hey, unlock the doors. Now, when it comes to the immobilizer system, the vehicle actually does computations to make sure that the key is in fact the right key for the vehicle, and it'll basically give the car a start or no start signal, depending on whether the key's correct or not. It's a pretty high-tech system as far as software goes. You know, on the older stuff, it was just the key, the ring around the ignition cylinder, and the instrument cluster, which had the immobilizer module built into it. Now, it's the key, the cluster, the ECM, um, the Kessie module, the body control module. Heck, I think even some of the compass modules or something like that have to be programmed to the car the same way that the keys do. So it's get, everything's getting more integrated than it used to be. But how do they fail? Well, it really depends on which side of the system we're talking about. On my old remote, you can actually separate these two, and you have a key portion and a fob portion. The key portion of it, like I said, has a little pill inside that functions with the immobilizer system. If the key portion were to fail, it's usually like a break in the pill, or the key simply lost its programming, or maybe the car side got weird. And you know, I don't know that I've ever mentioned it on any of these videos, but sometimes things just fail and there's really not a good explanation for why. They just stop working. The remote portion of it is actually the one that I've seen fail quite a bit more often. And there's two really common ways and one third way that doesn't happen all that much. The main failure of these things to work properly is the battery dies. It's just a little three volt battery. There's not a whole lot of storage capacity. And if you're like me and you're super OCD about hitting the lock button 14 times to make sure your car's locked, it can go through batteries pretty quick. The other way we see it fail is actually water intrusion. Like you dropped it in a puddle and it sat outside overnight, or you ran it through the wash because you left the key in your pocket. Those are the two most, most, most common ways we see them fail. We also do see sometimes the circuitry fail or a button gets stuck and it burn out one of the processors in the circuitry. But that's like the third most common thing. Again, batteries, one, and water or some other type of external influence damage is, is two. Really quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to check your battery, just because again, like I mentioned, that's the most common way to fail. All you need is a multimeter or a way to read voltage on a small battery. You take the red lead, put it on the positive side, as you can see here, the black lead on the negative side, and measure your voltage. It needs to be over three volts. In fact, I think the newer ones need to be over like 3.06 volts in order for the remote to function properly. Once that voltage drops below three volts, weird things happen like, 
Sometimes it'll lock, sometimes it won't lock, sometimes the alarm will go off. I've seen a bunch of cars come back to the dealership multiple times for weird issues because guys weren't checking the basics and testing the batteries in the remotes. So before we do anything with our keys and remotes, check that. And on the newer ones where the remote's all one piece or you have Kessie, it can actually make your car not start. So again, start with checking the battery. Or heck, just put a new battery in it. They're not that expensive and uh, then you won't have to worry about it. Is there a common time to fail? Not really. I've had to replace two remote batteries in my Passat. It's got about 140,000 miles. And like I mentioned a minute ago, I'm crazy OCD about locking the car. I'll do it five or six times and then walk 30 feet and come back and lock it again just to make sure I locked the car. So it can last a really long time or it can fail rather quickly. It really all depends on the usage of the remote. And I will tell you on the newer cars that do have the like push button start and keyless entry where you don't even have to hit the remote button, those do tend to wear out faster because the key is flashing signal a lot more often. How do we diagnose it? Well, an immobilizer issue, you're almost always gonna get like a key not in range fault in the cluster or the immobilizer light flashing in the cluster or the car will start and shut right back off. It'll run for like one second and then shut right back off. Those are typically immobilizer issues and there's not really much you can diagnose beyond that without a scan tool. With remote battery failure, it's a little easier. Eventually the remote just stops working, but what I have seen is the ability to unlock the car, but not lock the car back. And every weird remote thing you can imagine where only the passenger side door will work, only the driver's door will work, the car won't unlock, but it'll start fine. Fill in whatever story you want about remotes not working, and I've probably seen that happen. But again, start with the battery and go from there. Is replacing this a DIY? Well, it really all depends, like most DIY. On the older generation, you could actually program the remote portion with two keys, one key in the ignition and one key in the driver's door lock or trunk lock, depending on if it had that or not. When it comes to replacing the key itself, it gets a little tricky and you're gonna need some help with some scan tool action in order to get it to program to the car. There's also ways around a lot of these things. Um, Depending on what you're trying to do, there are companies that can actually code out the immobilizer. This is actually becoming a solution on the really old immobilizer stuff, like Immobilizer 2. Early 2000 cars, like the Beetle and the Jetta, where the clusters really aren't available anymore, or they're like $700. So there are companies that can take that out altogether. Of course, I don't recommend that, because you are in fact defeating a security system on your vehicle. But hey, if there's no other option, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments about Volkswagen keys, post that in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, HumbleMechanic.com, and obviously on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Oh, and don't forget to check out the new Deutsch Auto Parts website again in the show.